This is a quick le lecture about calculating the potential energy in an orbiting body. So let's take a look at this. This is going to be our formula. So the potential energy is equal to the product of the universal gravity constant times the mass of the central body. So in this case, it would be the larger object that's more or less stationary and then multiply that times the mass of the smaller body divided by the radius between them which is from the center of one to the center of the other. So let's take a look at what this would look like. Consider this example of a satellite orbiting the Earth. So we would be looking at the mass of the Earth, the mass of the satellite, the distance between the center of the satellite and the center of the Earth, so we would know the, need to know the radius of the Earth and the altitude of the satellite to find that distance. So those are what we're looking at. And keep in mind we do have this universal gravity constant that's part of it. So, all right, so U is potential energy is measured in joules. Masses are measured in kilograms. The radius has to be in meters. So if I give you something in kilometers, be sure you convert that and then the universal gravity constant doesn't change because it is a constant. Uh, because these numbers can be quite large and it's difficult to type in accurately uh, large numbers in Canvas, we are going to solve for things that are smaller. So in this case, the smallest thing would be the mass of the orbiting object. So let's rearrange this formula to solve for mass. The first thing we do is move RE8, RE plus H, the radius of the Earth plus the altitude, to the left side of the equation. So we multiply both sides and we get this, this equation. Then we need to divide both sides by U, so we take U and we move it over here by dividing like that. So now we have the radius of the Earth plus the altitude equals the product of this divided by the potential energy. And then we need to move uh, the radius of the Earth to the other side, so we do that by subtracting it from both sides, so we end up with this formula right here. That would be a good thing to write down in your handy dandy notebook and make a note that this is altitude and this is the radius of the Earth. Let's look at a problem. So, what is the height above the Earth of a 10,000 kilogram satellite that has a potential energy of negative 5.666? times 10 to the 11th joules, okay? Um, notice this is uh, negative. We keep the negative sign. It's based on, it's kind of a point of view. If it's moving toward you or away from you, you would call that plus or minus. Uh, but in, this energy is a vector, so we need to be aware of what direction it's going. So we are going to use a negative number um, your final answer should be positive, though, if you're doing things correctly. So, let's look at what we know. We know we have the mass of the satellite. We have the potential energy of the satellite. We know these things about the Earth. And we know we're looking for the height in meters, or the altitude above the Earth. So we're looking for this distance. All right. This is the equation that we just rearranged. That means that we have to put this in our calculator. In this case, I break it up, break it up, I'm breaking it up into steps. This is the gravity constant times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite. So the number we have on top is this, negative 3.918 times 10 to the 18th, very large number. Then we're going to take that and divide it by the potential energy. So we have a negative number divided by a negative number it gives you this very large number. And then we're going to take that number and subtract the radius of the Earth from it, and we get this number. So we get 655,500-ish, okay? Something I want to point out on this series of problems. I'm going to do this exact calculation again, except this time I'm going to plug it all the way in at once. And notice I get a apparently very different answer, okay? So in this case, we get same calculation, I just did it all at once, uh, and I get 657,000, so it increased 2,000 just there. So 
one of the things in these problems is rounding will make a really big difference. Avoid it until the end. Uh, because this can this result can change dramatically depending on how you calculate it all at once or breaking it into steps. Uh, we will see a wide variation here. So I put a, put a pretty generous window on this. So if you don't get the exact number, uh, you just have to get the first four decimal or first about the first four numbers right of the answer and it will be excellent actually about the first three numbers right if you're in there then you got it okay so I did put a wide window on these because this calculation is very susceptible to rounding issues that is all for this one